can actually hear what's going on outside with um, him mumbling. So you yeah, notice when he goes back and forth, he mumbles a lot. So. Ah! But basically, what you have to do is. Ah, time is still good. So, anyway, I'll give you the time of day. Perhaps if you two had something in common. Now. No, that's, that's not terribly helpful, I must admit. I'm going to try using the arrow keys and shift to run around. What so. am I missing here? Oh, well, so, no. Basically, what you need to do actually here is, um, and I didn't really figure this out until after three or four times when you'd gone between the courthouse and the law offices. What you're supposed to do is use the tape recorder and record his oh, ramblings. Think, Emmett, think! H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I. Oh. Because he wouldn't know what a tape recorder is, because it's 1930s. Now, now the, the whole the point of doing that is to take this back to Old Doc, who is uh, stuck in jail, and get him to solve the problem that he's been going through, which is, I don't think, related to law. Anyway, but, I mean, the first time I did this, I had no idea that that was what you were supposed to do. I mean, the tape recorder's role is recording over what's already in there is not made inherently obvious, so... Stack! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? I, re I recorded your... Where have you been? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. Uh, of course. <laughs> so, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? Why I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Of course it will. <laughs> what was H again? The Hamiltonian operator. Got it. I know all right to remember it, just think Lewis Hamilton. Should we ask you a few about a few other things? Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. And he's still oh. wandering him. Don't worry, in the I didn't talk anyway. to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could though. This air is tan and is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Hmm. Yeah. I think somehow we're gonna have a bit of problem. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? This father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. <laughs> no kidding. Whoa, dirty. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes, now I remember. Ask Edna, the etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That Whoa. would explain a lot. Ah, okay. Yeah, obviously I hadn't taken a lot of time to talk to talk before. What are you doing in jail? Come on, let's take... How'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. 
But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. It's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Uh, I think we kind of realize who it might be, but... I found your notebook. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that! That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Okay then. Hamiltonian operator. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <laughs> yeah, because he is in prison. Come on, Marty. You could have tried a bit harder. Anyway, um... Oh, here's our friend. Yeah. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. E equals the Hamilton. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah! Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? I'm from the planet Vulcan. I'm from the future. I read Lord Jules Verne. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Doesn't matter which one. Then you there can there. only be one. He said What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? You also remember I'm from the planet Vulcan as his uh, trick to get his dad in to force him to, to basically marry his uh, mother <laughs> in the past in the first film. I need your rocket drill. I really need your rocket drill. I really, really need your rocket drill. I'm just kidding. I need your rocket drill. Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. I need a fully operational model. I need a full-size model. I need it tonight. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <laughs> That's fully operational. Whoa. Tonight. Whoa. Otherwise, Trips we'll have to award dies. the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Uh, explain the subpoena. Arthur explain. McFly? I've got to subpoena my grandpa. Uh-oh. No! <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen! Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. I'm kind of running low on time here, so, well, I don't know. I've probably been busy into several parts already. And Edna's decided to, uh, take the stock there, so we'll come back to her in a moment, but what we're really supposed to do is completely ignore, um, Emmett's advice and go and talk to, uh, talk to her. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? Guess I'm here to shine your shoes. My mistake, I'll just move on. My mistake. Yeah, you're a mistake, all right, meathead. Just wanted to see what happened when you do that. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? 
Oh, we just found that out, Marty. Hmm. Keep an eye on Trixie. That broad's going all squarely on me. You got it, kid. Well, you're gonna stand there like an oaky, or you're gonna shine my shoes. Yes, I'm gonna shine your shoes. I'm looking for Arthur McFly. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. You know where he is? Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Well, where's the office? I forget. <laughs> you know, when so am I when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Isn't that Artie's hat? Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some of the peanuts? Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead. It's the eyes. You can see it in the eyes. Don't mind if I do. I'm sick of not hungry. What the hell is that? Hey, kid. Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey. This kid's not very bright. What did you do? What did you do, Marty? Oh. Give me that, that hat, you lousy crook! Really the way they turn around. Emmy! Oh, the peanuts are falling out of the back. Well, we just sent him to death. Nice oh, bridge. Damn it! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Ow! Fix me up! Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! I've got this hat, but sadly, it's useless. My grandpa may be a little wimpy, but he's got great taste in hats. I need to get this subpoena into Arthur McFly's hands, so young Doc will have the time to help me bust old Doc out of jail. Okay. Now, a subpoena is a... Um it's when they call, basically, it's a court order to basically, uh, means that you have to give evidence against someone in court. And it, it's called, so you can't really, uh, subvene it. So, um, so we definitely need to find Arthur somehow. Let's talk to him. That was you have to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. <laughs> if serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You hmm. could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. I'm not so sure, you know. Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. That's excellent. We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't Harry Callahan. <laughs> yeah. You know me. That's a pretty cool name to go around. So. Should we talk to Edna? See what she's still doing. Yeah. Nice bike, Huffy. Huffy? I'm not Huffy. I'm passionate. Passionate about justice, safety, law and order. Uh, never mind. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. 
I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. 